431 together. 431. I found a friend who is all to me. I'm saved. Saved, saved. Let's all stand together as we sing. 431 together. On that first, I found a friend who is all to me. His love is ever true. I love to tell how he lifted me and what his grace can do for you. singing tonight. Isn't it amazing? Isn't it great you can sing that? Do you realize that a great percentage of this world cannot sing that song? A great percentage of Americans can't sing that song. We get to sing it. Amen. I hope you can sing it anyway and mean it from your heart. And uh, great singing tonight. And uh, we're going to, looking forward to a great service together tonight. I want the choir to be ready to sing right after the the prayer, okay? That way we can let them come down and we'll have our testimonies here in a little bit, but I'd rather them be down with you when we have testimony time, all right? So let's pray together and we'll ask the Lord to meet with us this evening. Father, thank you for your goodness to us. Thank you, Lord, for the wonderful privilege that's ours to sing, we're saved, saved by your power divine. Lord, thank you so much for a great salvation that you provided for us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, Father, we bow before you here this evening. We thank you for the blessings of the morning service and for uh, the lady who trusted Christ yesterday and then came to church today to be baptized and other guests who are with us this morning. And yet, Lord, we come back tonight for a fresh blessing. And I ask you to meet with us and guide and direct in this service, make it exactly what you would like it to be. And we'll thank you for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, you may be seated.
272 in your hymnal, 272, once I drifted out in sin, had no hope nor joy within, but now I'm on the winning side, 272, let's sing that first together. Once I drifted out in sin, had no hope nor joy within, and my soul was burdened down with pride. Then my Savior came along, and he showed me I was wrong. Now I know I'm on the winning side. Well, I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've been listed in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. From that straight and narrow way, I was drifting every day. Out upon the waters deep and wide. But it all is over now. Glory lights is on my brow. And my soul is on the winning side. Well, I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. He's ever near, and in him so often I confide. He's the keeper of my soul, and he placed me on the winning side. Well, I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I. cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord. I'm on the winning side. You got one more in you? Well, I'm on the winning side. Yes, I'm on the winning side. Out in sin, no more will I abide. I've enlisted in the fight for the cause of truth and right. Praise the Lord, I'm on the winning side. Well, that's good, isn't it? Praise the Lord. All right, now a few announcements for us. Uh, Lord willing, uh, Wednesday night, I believe we'll have Thomas Jones here. He's our missionary to Guatemala. Um, and I say Lord willing because I... The last I found a correspondence with him was from October of last year. And when we set this up for May 25th, and I haven't contacted him since, and I've heard from him since, and uh, it was just uh, of the Lord. Mrs. Taylor had asked me a question about him this morning, and I went back to look, and I saw that. I don't have it on my calendar, so I don't know if that's changed or not changed, but Wednesday night, you're going to have Brother Jones, you're going to have me, all right? So one and one or the other, but we'll have church, amen? And uh, we look forward to that Wednesday night at 7, all right? And then uh, regular schedule on through the week with uh, Thursday night uh, uh, down at the prison with RU and Friday right here at 7. And then uh, Saturday morning uh, out at London with the RU program. And, of course, our soul winning and bus visitation. We have 416 different prospects to go visit, okay? So uh, we, we got to go get them now, all right? Uh, they came to us. Now we go to them, all right? take the gospel to them and we're excited about that so that'll be kicking off on this Saturday and then um, right into next Sunday already now um, we can use some help obviously you know most everything got put into the fellowship hall uh, after the fair Saturday mainly because it was wet normally we put it away into the shed but we didn't want to put the wet things there and it's uh, they blew the fan on it all night long and I think much of it is uh, pretty well dried out what has to take place is the bounce house our bounce house that's in the shed has to come out 
and uh, the other stuff get put in where it belongs, and then we have to bring that bounce house into the fellowship hall and blow it up uh, and let it dry out, okay? We can't put it away wet. It will not be a pretty thing if that happens. So uh, we let it dry out, and then in a couple days when it's all dry, we deflate it and put it all back together and put it back in the shed, okay? So we're gonna, we'll are gonna need a little help to do that uh, uh, probably tomorrow. Uh, Bob Wallace, you available tomorrow? All right, Bob Wallace will be supervising that project, okay? Uh, Bob can't do a lot of that physical work anymore. He's got uh, some heart issues and such, but he sure can be a supervisor, okay? I'm sorry? Tomorrow? You got a doctor's appointment at 1130. All right, is Tuesday a better day? Tuesday's a better day? All right. Why don't we make it Tuesday then, all right? Tuesday better for you too, Brother Yoder? Okay, all right. If it's better for Yoder and Wallace, it's better for everybody. It's just the way it is, all right? All those in favor, say aye. aye. And opposed, don't say anything, all right? And uh, if you want to do it all yourself, just come to the bar and do it all yourself, and we'll all be happy, all right? But uh, just uh, it'd be uh, Tuesday and uh, say what time you want to do it Tuesday. What's good for you guys? 9 o'clock good? 9 o'clock, okay? 9 o'clock Tuesday if you can help, and uh, if you're not sure if you're working and you can't come to the evening, uh, call these guys and uh, see if they still need some help on Tuesday night uh, after you get off work. If, you, if anything needs done, they can let you know whether it needs done or not. All right? That will be great because we like to get things back where they belong and uh, get them in order. Okay? Um, there's still ice in the ice container out there. If anybody wants some ice, help yourself, okay? When the service is over, uh, please take your take the ice. And then on the, the sign-up sheet down there, uh, Brother Eddie Hamby and uh, Cindy are celebrating 30 years of marriage, and uh, they're, they're re gonna renew their wedding vows. And uh, they got married right here at Bible Baptist Church, and they called several weeks ago. <coughs> their children are doing something special for them for their 30th, and uh, they wanted to do it here at Bible Baptist, and it's on June 25th, all right? And uh, so there's a sign-up sheet for that downstairs. If you can come to that, they wanted to invite uh, anyone from the church who'd like to come and be part of that. So uh, just sign up down there if you can do that. It's Saturday, June 25th, okay? And when try to get that done so they know a few weeks at a time preparing food and everything, what, they, what they'll be looking at. All right? Okay. We're going to have testimonies here in just a minute, but we want to celebrate a couple of anniversaries that we didn't get to last week, and we're going to get to this week, all right? And uh, though I had my doubts whether we were getting to them this week, too, but uh, <laughs> I was back there telling James, call and check on Neil Parrish, man. And he's, he's, anyway, but he, Neil brought the flowers in just in time. We have two to celebrate tonight. Uh, we have John and Carol Coleman, and uh, we have Andy and Nikki Slaybaugh. Uh, both of them were May 14th, I think, weren't you? No, you were May 11th, that's right. And so come on up, or come on down, or come on over, whatever it is. And uh, Brother Neil, bring the flowers on up here, and we'll give them to the ladies. You can trust them to bring them up? All right. That's great. Sometimes you just get a little anxious. It's all right. <laughs> Brother Wallace and Brother Taylor, 
you take care of our microphones here, would you please, for our testimonies, since you guys are kind of certified in that area? They do this every Friday night at RU, so we'll let them do it on Sunday night at church, all right? You want to share anything about yesterday? Uh, best, again, we'll go through all the cards and try to get a, a, a real count, but I, it's, it's got to be right in the neighborhood of 1,800 or so uh, that were here, um, as far as at least registered uh, to, that they were here. I know that, um, and as far as I can, the best we can tell uh, salvation-wise, there were 40 salvation decisions uh, that were made. I'm not sure we got to everybody, but uh, they, they heard the gospel. And uh, it was a great day for that as well. And several folks got to personally lead people, Lord. I know Ms. Taylor did. I know Brother uh, Yoder did. Anybody else get to personally lead people, Lord? Sherry got to lead someone to the Lord? That's good. Okay. Kay Wallace did? Okay, great. She's down in nursery. So uh, wonderful. And uh, that was good. And I realized it was, and, and by the way, we are, uh, if you, we, we've discussed uh, what, how we're going to do it we're, we discussed whether we've outgrown being able to have it here and we may have to move to somewhere where there's more room um, but that's that's a lot of work too to move everything load it in a truck or something and get it somewhere else so uh, that's a lot of work also but um, we're we're very limited as we're finding out on finding place for people to park so uh, we're, we're discussing things to do with this field next door uh, and we're also discussed uh, Paving our parking lot all the way back to the trees, and uh, giving us extra parking. That that not only would help the big day, that helped our normal services. Uh, it's difficult to find places to park uh, when we have a crowd, so uh, that would really help. It was my understanding that that was supposed to have been done when they got the fellowship hall completed, and uh, that's why there is some uh, what they call that stuff they put down ABC or whatever gravel. That gravel is there for that was there for that reason. But we're going to check and see what it would cost to get that finished out and so there's some options we're looking at and we also talked about logistically doing some things differently to spread things out a little bit and not have everybody so because there's a lot of people a lot of people there was lines everywhere everywhere and so uh everybody many of you know you didn't have any breaks at all so uh it was uh but it was fantastic just fantastic day so uh who wants to say a good word susan Tell you what, I have been very blessed that I had the opportunity to actually work the country fair for my very first time. I was here last year for it as a guest. But even though it rained and we're all still sore, I just want to praise God for everything that he's done, all the donations that we got and received, and all the people that got led to Christ, even though they may not have came here to be baptized, they still got the word. And that's basically what we're, we want to try to do is spread his word so that we can reach those who are not saved so they mm -hmm. can be saved. Amen. Good, Amen. Susan. Thank you. All right. Anybody else? Got something over here? Xavier? Uh, when uh, Scotty and I went out flaring a couple times, and uh, we went down one one street, and all of a sudden, phew, all these houses, and it, it just really surprised us, and we kept wanting to go back for more and more. But uh, oh, so there it is. <laughs> so uh, Scotty and I went out flaring a bit, and we found just every every turn we took, there were hundreds of houses and people mm -hmm. and everything, and that just surprised me, it surprised us, and mm -hmm. and we really wanted to keep going and keep going. And, um, but uh, I, I, I was just, and I've never been to one of these either, so this was my first one, and I, I saw all these people, and it just reminded me how many are right here in Grove City. And yeah, we, that's right. Yeah. we got to get to them, and just excited for the all-day uh, soul winning uh, mm -hmm. next next weekend on Saturday. Amen. All day. Amen. All day. God bless you, Xavier. Yeah. Amen. Praise the all Lord. Right. That's good. Yeah, Don? Yeah. I, uh, I helped Dave Anderson and Jim Talladay out at the entrance trying to set it up, getting ready to have the day. And I had a little preview of what it might be like. There was people coming in over an hour, an hour and a half early, and I had to tell them to go somewhere else and wait and next door and here and there. 
and uh, people pulling up into the driveway, same thing, wanting to know if we were still going to have it just because the weather was looking so bad. And I knew right then it was going to be a big day, but I had no idea <laughs> that it was going to be as big as it was. All I can say is, uh, oh, me of little faith. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see right now, the pastor touched on it, and uh, this is good. If the weather had been sunny, we would have been blown out of the water. Mm -hmm. uh, this is tremendous. God is just bringing them in by the, by the tons, it seems like. But what a privilege to work with all you guys. Uh, I've never seen, e every year it just surpasses seeing everybody kicking in Amen. and doing something. That's right. And uh, we even had volunteers from visitors coming in working. And uh, just, it's awesome to see God get all the glory. That's all. Amen. Praise the Lord, Don. It's good. Tanya? Um, I got to work face painting. I had so much fun. I probably saw almost <laughs> every child that came through. And um, uh, the line was getting bigger and bigger. And I just praised God because the Villatoros came in, and Melinda and her mom, Rachel, they both just sat down, and they're actually professionals. They've done it before. They used wow. to do it, and so that was such a blessing, and God is so good. Amen. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, all these kids walk around with their... I thought, I was kidding Tanya. I said, Bob will wake up this morning, and his face will be painted, you know, so <laughs> <laughs> she'll do it in her sleep, you know. This is my, first, this is my first time, too, for... The, the country fair mm. and I'm amazed at the amount of wonderful workers you have here yeah. this lady Leanne over here everybody that came up she'd say do you have a home church are these <laughs> children in Sunday school it was Amen. amazing and this lady was working two or three jobs at the same time mm -hmm. and then there's Carol who was whipping the stuff up you know yeah. it, it just amazed me yeah. it just amazed Amen. me how wonderful it was and uh, I really I, I'm sure that we were all blessed. Amen. All Amen. blessed. Amen. Sandra, thank yeah. you. That's great. Amen. Terry? Um, I worked at the registration booth. It was my first year to be at the fair, and I just loved all the people coming and being able to say hi to everybody, and everybody was just so polite and cordial. So many people thanked us for holding this for them mm. and their children, and um, just, it was just a blessing to see everybody come out, and Amen. the rain was not hampering anybody's spirit. There were people complaining. They were standing in long lines, and they were just so glad to be here, and it was great. It was tremendous to hear you give the gospel to people, um, and just they all gathered around you and how intently they were listening. So it was just a great day, and nobody in, here at the church was complaining. Everybody was working together, and it was just a great uh, time to serve the Lord. So. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. That's good. Yes, it was. That's good. Leanne? Leanne, you take the mic. Yeah. Oh, thank you. It means you only with talk with one hand. With what two. Sandy just said <laughs> about the telling people about mm. the Lord and do you have a church and whatever. And I kind of ran them by what went on, goes on in our church, and for them to come. And just the talking to everybody and sharing with them and about the Lord and coming to church, it filled me with such joy and filled my soul. And it was a great experience to be out there doing this with other people so that they know the Lord and we will meet them one day in heaven. Amen. And actually we had four people back here that had been at the fair yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, um, one girl, there was a girl over here, a young girl, who came, who had been here. Mm -hmm. And then I think it was, um, Good. yeah, Diane, that someone jumped in and was helping there mm -hmm. with the um, ice cones, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, young girl. So, and it was great. It was just great that yeah, we had was. all this going mm -hmm. on. And that we had as many people that you said. And praise Amen. the Lord for the whole thing. Amen. Amen. And now the what? other thing I believe, with what Don said, with Amen. our numbers and everything, we may be um, over our numbers that we felt we may be able to handle or whatever, but I fully believe that whatever the Lord sent, that's what he meant for us to have. And that, if he intended for there to be more, 
he would have sent his angels to support and help us. He will get to us we what we need. Them. Amen. That's good. Now, what were you working in? What booth were you working in? I was working with the uh, popcorn. 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 All right. I just, uh, I just trying to. That that explains why the popcorn line was so long. And uh, <laughs> Leanne's talking to all these people as they come up there to get popcorn. You know. No, I'm teasing you. All right, Diane. It was the snow cones. We had Ricky in the snow cones, and her daughter yeah. stepped up. Ricky and Lydia. And came to help us. And then this other girl showed up, and I looked at Ricky. I can't remember Ricky's daughter's name. I said, is she your friend? She said, no, I just met her today, but she's my friend now. <laughs> and there she was helping. I mean, it was just, it was really awesome. And again, I'd like to say that I, I know the Lord kept the, the crowds quiet. They waited in longer lines than they ever have if they came before. And um, I also think maybe the Lord did keep it maybe cooler and misting rain that there wasn't more come that we mm -hmm. couldn't handle. Yeah. Because I really think that was as much as we could have done yesterday. Everybody did everything they could possibly Amen. do. Amen. And I'm glad that our church has Country Fair Day. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good. Ann Moreland? Yeah. I just, I just want to thank the young people as well. Um, <clears throat> Josiah, little Josiah Reed came up and asked if, we, if I needed help. Mm -hmm. Caleb, Jacob, they all helped. It was such a blessing. And all the teenagers, it was so sweet. They did such a good job. Yes, it was did. nice to see them all, you know, just all chip in. And I think they had such a sweet spirit. I think they had a great time in the rain, believe it or not. So amen, amen. Did the, uh, you did a softball in the buckets, didn't you? And you and Grace and Nate, I saw Caleb helping. And uh, and where are the guys, where's, uh, is Nathan here? There they are down here. These guys. Yeah. These guys in the dunk tank, buddy. That was wow. uh, that was cold, man. <laughs> you didn't, yeah. you weren't, you weren't warming up real quick after you got soaking wet. So uh, they, they were, they were troopers for a while there. After a while, we had to close that down and let them get warm so they don't get pneumonia. But uh, they, they did a great job, fellas. I appreciate you doing that. And uh, Abigail and Emma did a great job in their games. Just, just fantastic. And uh, not often you get young ladies like that, and they, they just they just stayed at it all all four hours. Yeah. Did a great job, great job. Somebody else, Brother James, James Norman, Bob. I just want to tell Don I was the same way. I was very skeptical at the beginning. Um, I was worried about the rain and everything else. I think it just shows the power of prayer, yeah. because I know so many people poured their hearts over this. And uh, it showed. Right. It showed uh, through God's power. Um, secondly, I think I told Bob this. I'm always amazed every year. Whatever tool we need is magically in his toolbox. <laughs> it's by the grace of God that it's there. <laughs> that's what we need. He's like, I just throw it, everything in there in the morning. I'm like, it's what we need. Mm. And uh, lastly, uh, I thought there was finally going to be a kink in it when we heard from Jimmy Johns that people need to move their car. Uh, I was going to try to run over there, but... Uh, uh, gratefully, Brett did to begin with, and from what I heard, um, the owner of Jimmy John's wasn't even mad at us. He was yeah. happy to have people go by. It was just a customer that was not too happy with Jimmy mm -hmm. John's and us. So what I thought was going to be something for the devil was yeah. just Turned something out, out in the wind. Amen. That's great. Praise the Lord. That's good. Amen. Good. Anybody else? Brett? Brett, Brett Linky, right here. Yeah, I know. I'm that ain't bluegrass. They were playing your song, huh? Whoa. <laughs> All right, Brett. Uh, no, I, I do. I want to praise the Lord. We had a, a very good day on the bus. Amen. Um, it was really amazing just to kind of pull in with the big yellow bus and people were like, oh, it's today. I'm like, yes. So you've got five minutes. And I will be back in five, so you best get on. And so, and we would circle around, get other people, and come back for them. But it was just so amazing how many people would just come out and come out. When we got here, uh, Lisa was in the nursery, and she had the phone with her. She's like, answer it. I have, to, I have to use the restroom. Answer it. If anyone calls, just tell them it's still on. I'm like, whatever. So I answered the phone. Sure enough, hey, it's raining. Is it still on? I'm like, rain or shine? He goes, well, which one is it? Yes. Oh, okay, so you are having it. Okay, good. Yeah, mm -hmm. and so... 
But it was just so amazing how many people came out, even the thing with Jimmy John's. And it was about that time. I'm like, well, let's go over there and move the car because we don't need another vehicle towed out. And so I went over. And actually, the owner that I talked to is a Patel. That Patel is the brother of Nick Patel. Nick Patel owns a lot of the hotels in Grove City. Hmm. I found that out going through getting uh, various donations and such, mm -hmm. like Hilton Garden and other places. Right. I kept saying Nick Patel, Nick Patel. And I went, this guy seems like I should know him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, and that happens to be his brother who runs that. Okay. And, right. and he's like, oh, no, no, we love the company. And, you know, you guys are welcome. It's a big event. You know, we're neighbors. We want all the crowds you guys can have. And, you know, they were just, you know, he was just as happy to have us parked there as anybody. And it was just a customer Amen. who got irate about it and sure, whatever. So sure. I understand that. But the blessing <laughs> was that people were still there. And, yeah, it wasn't a great day as far as the weather goes, but people were there. Yeah, and what so. blew me away, and I never saw this, um, at, at when, when in Bible college we had like a half and half thing where you go to Sunday school and then you go to the fair. Well, for here... It was really a, an amazing thing that about two, everything kind of went to a low roar. You gave an open air invitation like you did, and I and I admit I was peeking to see who was raising hands, and I was just blown away by how many people were just. Yeah. And it's like, man, yeah, we're alive. We just we got to get them. Amen. We got to get them. We're so short-handed when it comes Saturday. We got to get them. Amen. We got to get them. How many came in on the bus? Amen. We had 21 on the bus. 21. Yeah. Good. All right. Brother Paxton, Brother Moreland, and then Mary Lou's over here. Okay, I was, uh, I went over to um, the car lot last night after our, our little uh, country fair, and you know, the Shannons had a bunch of people, we had them come from his church, and there was a bunch of them down there still at his house. And he said, uh, his wife said, man, you know, that was a great message your pastor gave right in the middle of the thing, and he said, mm -hmm. I was, they were really blown blown aback, taken aback by the, because they don't do it that way. They do the message in the beginning, and then they have the fair. And he said, that was, oh, that was an awesome mm -hmm. thing to do. They were all having fun. They're all stuck there. <laughs> now, that's what she said. They're all stuck there, and then you pray, then, then you stop, and you, uh, mm -hmm. you give them, a, you know, with the prize and everything, everybody will stay here and listen to the gospel. And they said, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what the fair is all about. It's not to come Amen. and eat all the cotton candy and eat all the hot dogs you can, drink all the pop you can, and do, you know, it's to spread the gospel. And she said, man, that was a great thing to do. She said, I heard it, you know, I mean, she said, I stood there. She said, I'm not sure whether a lot of people listened, but then she said, I was surprised. She said, I probably shouldn't have been looking around, but I saw when everybody raised their hands, and she said, I saw all those people that wanted to know about salvation. And she said, it was a really, praise the Lord, Amen. you know, and they're from a different church. Mm -hmm. And they said that it was the best they had seen. Oh, praise the Lord. That's great. Thanks, yeah. Dave. Brother Ron? Um, I just want to say, you know, I was working the joust, you know, yeah. be beat the tar out of each other kind yeah. of thing. Um, and I was working that with Brother Linderman, and he has such a ten Is he here tonight? Right behind you. Yeah. He's There's got your Mr. Back. Smiley. Yeah. He, that man smiled the whole time. And he was so gentle with those kids. Amen. And putting up with those, those children and everything. I mean, it was just great to see him and his heart Amen. do that. And uh, it gave me a chance to, the way he was working with that, and I was able to talk with some parents and, um, and so forth. And there at the end, I don't know if you guys noticed, but there's an older gentleman coming out with two little girls there. Right at the end, we were closing up. And I, I stopped talking to him for a minute. He said he drove an hour and a half up here. And got lost and was trying to make it in time and, um, you know, missed out on so much. But he goes, I said, well, you know, we do this every year. And he goes, we'll be here next year. Amen. Amen. And uh, a lot of the parents were just saying this, how sweet the spirit were, was here at the church. And I said, well, if you really knew a lot of them, it wasn't like, but, <laughs> but no, I said, you know, that it really is. We're a tight family here. We love each other. We love up on people. And I just want to thank you guys for you know, showing that in your heart, Amen. you know, and we had a good right. time doing that, even in the rain. Amen. Amen. Sure yeah. did. And I, and Chuck smiled to balance out them looking at Ron Moreland. <laughs> 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 Think, man, these people are mean. And Chuck was smiling to <laughs> counter that off. Amen. That was, I still wanted to, 
I still thought we should have got you two in there to finish it off and joust each other. You know, that would have been fun. All right. Mary Lou? Uh, I noticed we was running out of popcorn, so I said to Diane, I'm going to ask Pastor if I can go get some. Well, I got the card. I got the card, and then I went to Gordon's, and I got four bags of popcorn. I'm on my way out. Who do I get a call from but Kathy? Oh. We need 400 hot dogs, three things of juice, and I said, what? So I, so I went ahead and got it, and I was on my way back, and the pastor said that Bob, Bob Reed called me, and I didn't, I didn't hear it because I was running around with this boy getting all this stuff. <laughs> so I come back here, and I'm with Thelma and Emma. I treated them rough. I really did. We was opening bags, stuffing popcorn, and Chris, where's he at? He was putting too much in it. I, he was giving them almost a whole bag. I said, you can't do that. Do you see how many people's out there? So we got it down to a half a bag. We got four bags out there, ran out of popcorn, but I wasn't going back. Mm. <laughs> they, they like the popcorn. That's good. Is that it? Go to, go to Emma and Michael over here, all right? And we'll. The Lord has got to be still smiling. I mean, what a, what a blast, you know. You know, we are so blessed, people, to have a pastor that has a heart for souls. You know, you, you wouldn't believe the people that have not um, heard Jesus. They go to church faithfully, ritually, but never heard the name of Jesus dying for them, kids and adults. And it's like, wow, when he gave the message and all those hands went up. I said, wow, you know, I was just blown away because here's these people that are going to die and go to hell. Yeah. And we're giving them hot dogs and a little gift card. And praise God for all the people that gave because, yeah. you know what, those people, we got to witness to them that gave out of their hearts to, you know, maybe to help their business or whatever, but to get a soul saved, you know, wow. Yeah. That, that was so, so amazing. And I'm just so blessed every year. My cup is running over. Amen. You know, and I just praise God for a pastor that has a heart mm -hmm. for souls because, you know, a lot of people don't look at the people around them that are dying and going to hell. But, you know, it, it just touches my heart to think that God has got to be um, very pleased with a pastor that says, hey, we're going to go after these people. We're not going to let them fall into hell because we're not doing what we've got to do. And praise God for a, a church that has a heart for souls, too, Amen. because we just move like a smooth old clock people it was amazing you know the lord had just i could just if you could just picture god up there just looking at his son look at my children go you know and if he only thing would have made it better if he just showed up people <laughs> but it was awesome and i just praise the lord that i got to be a part of that and i just praise the god for the most wonderful church in the world Amen. to serve alongside and I, I praise the god our god for our pastor and a mm. heart for souls and his wife uh, praise the lord that's great yeah michael right here in the second round I just want to say that the did that go off? Is it on? Okay. There it is. I just want to, you know, bless God, that, you know, that we was able to volunteer and be here. I had such a great time. I'm glad that, you know, my family was able to uh, help out. Um, I was over in the basketball area, and, mm -hmm. and uh, the crowd was just, you know, the line was so long, and, and you know, just had a great time, you know, and I just can't wait till next year to be here to volunteer to, you know, to help again. Amen. Amen. That's great. Amen. Praise the Lord. Danny? I just want to praise God for an awesome church family, and uh, everybody did work uh, really well together. They gave 100%. Uh, Nathan and Gage, they, they went till their lips turned purple, and I just wanted to say thank you to you guys, and um, you know I wanted people to come. Yesterday, to get a hot dog and and a free drink, but I wanted them to stay. Because they found Jesus, mm -hmm. and. We can do this every day of the week. We don't have to have a big fair day. There's, I was walking to get napkins. We were running out of napkins, and I ran over to the Dollar General, 
and I was walking next to a lady and she was telling me her story and she just got out of prison and I was telling her about the addiction program and how how our ladies in our church would just love her so many ways and she was like that's what I need I, that's what I need right now and, and I told her you know when our services were and how often we have them and she was that uh, that's what I need and but in my heart I knew that she didn't have any intentions of coming back and and there are people right here in Grove City and in Columbus that that are dying and going to hell and we need to reach them mm -hmm. I mean we had a great turnout and not to put any say anything negative about that but we need to make this a way of life and, and go out every day and knock on doors and, and get people and tell them about Jesus because, you know, there's a lot of people. Our church family's here, and, and, and I'm, I'm blessed to, to, to come to this church and have a pastor who has a passion for, for his lost souls. But we can do more. And uh, I just... Wanted to share that. Amen. Emma Jean? Got to use the microphone. I want to thank Jesus that we got a lot of flyers out. Amen. Oh. Sure did. Did a good job with that. Got flowers out every day. That was a great job. All right, Brother Parrish? We'll have to wrap it up with this. All right, I'm... Sorry. I'm just thankful for all the people that worked very hard in our booth, but what really impressed me was all the other people that came in and helped, not even being asked, just came up and helped, and because they knew we needed the help. Yeah, amen. That's amen. Great. That's great. And these, I tell you, the, the Talladays, the parishes, the poll labels, the folks in that hot dog and drink booth, uh, all of them were, I'm looking at them, I think they're all... Uh, that, most of them are 70 and up. Neil, Neil isn't quite there yet, but uh, am I right? I mean, it, it was a lot of work, my friends, and uh, they were just going the whole time. And uh, you think it's, it's in, Brother Abrams was in there, and he's not in that category. He's still <laughs> younger. He's only had two heart attacks. That's all he's had. But uh, <laughs> just uh, to... To cook seventeen hundred hot dogs, buddy. That's uh, that's some that's some cooking and opening seventeen hundred buns and you know mm -hmm. digging into the cold and pulling out the pops. And Brother Paxson helped in there. Brother Simonson helped in there. And uh, I think Brother Barham stepped in and did some grilling a little bit. And different guys came in to help out, and that was uh, necessary. And uh, we'll uh, we we did take note of that, by the way. All right, so you'll you'll have some help there. <laughs> Smiley? Oh, he left the jousting and came to the hot dog stand, huh? Okay. Didn't know that. All right. Well, wonderful, wonderful day. Amen. We praise God for it. Well, um, Tuesday, Brother Morton leaves uh, to go to Armenia, and he'll be there for three months. And uh, he had asked that we'd sing a song before he leaves. And uh, what he wanted to sing was 10,000 angels. He could have called 10,000 angels, right? Uh, it's 326 in your book. If you get that, 326. Now follow the leader, okay? Follow Bob. This is not an easy congregational song. Just keep everybody together on, all right? And uh, if everybody just does it the way they want to do it, it'll sound horrible, all right? But if you stick with the leader, I think he can make it sound like a nice choir, okay? So uh, we're going to sing 326. Ten, he could have called 10,000 angels. Let's stand together and sing it. And uh, sing from your heart, Bob Alitas. They pound the hands of Jesus in the garden where he prayed. They led him through the streets in shame. They spat upon the Savior so pure and free from sin. They said, crucify him. Hey!
Stand just greet one another, make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. We'll come back and sing that last stand together. Together, as you find your seats to the howling mob, he yielded. He did not for mercy cry. Let's sing that last together. To the howling mob, he yielded. He did not for mercy cry. The cross of shame he took alone. And when he cried his finish, he gave himself to die. Salvation. done this yet either but let's sing that chorus of this acapella i'd like to hear how you guys sound i think you'll do great let's sing that acapella together all right ready he could have called ten thousand angels to destroy the
Amen. 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 Great singing. You can be seated. That was a great job. Man. And listen, all of uh, that, being able to provide all that for the community is because of your faithful giving. And uh, thank you for that. And you won't know till you get to heaven. Uh, what you're giving produced uh, it is not uh, it's investment it's investments is what it is and uh, you're investing in eternity and um, trusting God that he'll uh, abundantly uh, bless you for your giving and uh, thanks for being a church that's willing to give to reach others for Christ amen let's pray together shall we father we ask your blessing on our offering tonight thank you for uh, people that give and Lord I know we can give without loving but we sure can't love without giving and thank you for a church that loves you and lord we we do want to see people saved but that's because we love you and you want to see people saved and so father i pray that you continue to to bless the people of bible baptist church and may you bless this offering again tonight lord take care of the needs that we have and uh, lord the the ministries that you've given to us here May you continue to provide for those ministries so we can send the gospel forth from this place here in our community, into our state, throughout our nation, and even across the world. And we'll thank you for it. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your Bibles this evening, if you would, and I want you to turn to Psalm 34, please. Psalm 34 for our scripture reading. Psalm 34, please. We're going to read verses 1 through 9 of Psalm 34 for our scripture reading. We'll read these verses responsibly, as we normally do, begin together on verse 1, then I'll read 2, and we'll alternate till we read through verse 9. And as our custom is, let's stand together to read the Scripture. All of us standing, please, to read God's Word. And let's begin together on verse 1 of Psalm 34. Ready? I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. And let's pray together, shall we? Father, add your blessing, please, to the scripture reading here this evening. And Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful service already we've enjoyed here this evening. 
Father, we've enjoyed the music and the, the people singing praises to Thee, enjoyed the choir number, enjoyed these testimonies immensely. And Father, I, I, I'd like to believe that You enjoyed hearing Your people give You praise and glory tonight as well. And we do, we do give You all the praise and glory for what we saw yesterday and for the folks who You brought out. Lord, it's a great privilege to serve our generation by the will of God. And Lord, we're asking you that you'll open the hearts of people as we go back to visit them and thank them for coming to our fair and, and ask for an opportunity to share the gospel with them. That you'll open the hearts of people, Lord, they'll be receptive to the word of God. And Lord, we'll see hundreds come to know Christ as their Savior as a result of our country fair in 2016. Now, Father, I pray you'll speak to our hearts now this evening. We, we want to hear from you. We want to be encouraged and be strengthened and be helped by your word tonight. And I pray that this psalm would do that for each of us. And so, Lord, help us to give, us, give, help us to give you our attention for these next few minutes. Lord, I know folks are tired, and I know that it was a long day yesterday and another day today. And, Lord, I, I want to be a help and encouragement. And so, Lord, may we find that in your word this evening. Help me as I bring the message and help the folks as they listen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you may be seated. You know, as I look at this psalm, you, you think, do I, ever, do I ever praise the Lord enough? Do you, do you ever get to where you just uh, think that you give thanks too much? Usually that's not our issue, is it? <laughs> And uh, there, there's no limit, and there should not be a limit to our praise and our thanksgiving. Stop and think and ask yourself maybe sometime, what are you most thankful for? A Sunday school teacher asked her class what they were thankful for, and one little boy said, I'm thankful for my glasses. And I thought that was a little unusual, and the teacher said, well, why do you... Thank the Lord for your glasses. I mean, she's thinking in her mind, most little boys are kind of upset and bitter about having to wear glasses. And he said, well, they keep the boys from hitting me and the girls from kissing me. <laughs> uh, well, that boy's on to something. Sometimes it's just the little things that mean the most in our lives and why we want to thank God for that. Robinson Crusoe, when he was wrecked on his lonely island, he drew up two columns, what he called evil and the good. And he, he put down as follows. He was cast on a desolate island, but he was still alive and not drowned. He, divided, he was divided from mankind and banished from human society, but he put on the good side, I'm not starving. He had no clothes. I was on the bad side, but he put on the good side, he was in a hot climate and didn't need any. He said he was without means of defense, but on the good side, he said, I saw no wild beasts such as had been seen on the coast of Africa. He said, on the bad side, I had no soul to speak to, but he said, God had sent a ship so near to the shore that I could get all of the things off it that I needed. So he concluded that there wasn't any condition in the world so miserable, but there wasn't something to be thankful for. Something to find to be thankful for in it. Now, think about your own life. How, how are you at finding things to be thankful for instead of dwelling on things you can be negative about? Finding the good and not just thinking about the bad. Things that we ought to give praise to the Lord for. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 And everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Giving thanks in everything, in every circumstance. Praising the Lord in all circumstances. It doesn't mean you like every circumstance of life. For certainly there's some things that come into our lives that are, that are difficult. But we can still, in everything, give thanks. Corey Ten Boom talks about in the hiding place when she had an incident that taught her how to be thankful and to always be thankful. She and her sister Betsy had just been transferred to the worst German prison camp 
they had seen yet. It was called, called Ravensbrook. And on entering the barracks, they found that they were extremely overcrowded and flea infested. And that morning, their scripture reading fell in 1 Thessalonians. And it was 1 Thessalonians 5, and they read verse 18 about praying without ceasing and in everything give thanks. And her sister Betsy told Corey that she wanted her to stop and thank the Lord for every detail of their living quarters. And Corey prayed, but she refused to give thanks for the fleas. Got to draw the line somewhere. And Betsy protested and argued with her. And finally, Corey said, I succumbed to her pleadings and thanked God for the fleas. And during the months they spent at that camp, they were surprised how, to, how, how they could openly hold Bible studies in their barracks and prayer meetings. And the guards never interfered. The guards never came in and did anything. And it wasn't until several months later they learned the reason the guards wouldn't come in the barracks. Fleas. Thank God for the fleas. You know, that's, that's kind of how we are. God has the blessings and we don't recognize them. We can look at them as burdens or, or difficulties, but those turn out to be the real blessings. Now here in Psalm 34, by the way, how many of you know the first few verses of Psalm 34? I thought every time you hear the song the choir sang tonight in, in shady green pastures so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. I think of Lester Roloff. And how many of you know Lester Roloff? When I say that name, you heard Lester Roloff? And i uh, <clears throat> been in heaven for many years now. But uh, what an what a amazing man of God. You still hear his broadcast sometimes. You listen to certain radio stations. And uh, I remember waiting in Greenville, South Carolina at Southside Baptist Church. And we were waiting for Brother Roloff to preach. It was a Sunday evening. And I think they started at 6 o'clock in those days. And we waited till I think it was almost 8 o'clock. Two hours after, and we just sang for two hours waiting for Brother Roloff to show up. He was flying in in his airplane. That was an adventure in itself. And, uh, but he flew in and, and landed. And finally, we're 2,000 people or so in the auditorium, and, and he had a little uh, quartet. I think they call him the Honey Bee Quartet or something like that. And, uh, but he come walking down. And Brother Roloff was not a big man, uh, just a short fella, maybe 5'6", maybe 5'7", five, five, and a uh, scrawny guy. And had a Bible big as he was, and a uh, big, big sized Bible. And he come walking down that aisle. There's a, you, you could hear a pin drop throughout the auditorium. Everybody's watching him walk down the aisle and get up in the pulpit. And he looked out at everybody, and you know what he did? He looked out and he said, In shady green pastures, so rich and so sweet, God leads his dear children along. And he sang as only he can sing it. And, uh, I never, I, I, that's a memory that's just etched in my mind that uh, every time I hear that song, that's what I remember. And uh, thank God for Brother Roloff. But he also, uh, this song here, I will bless the Lord at all times. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in thee, Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 34, 1 through 4. Isn't that something? And you just memorize four verses of scripture while you're doing it. Amen. Do you know that song? Have anybody heard that? couple people, all right? Yeah, my son. <laughs> he said, yeah, I heard it a few times. <laughs> and uh, well, this is, this is David's psalm, and, and uh, it's really a psalm of praise. And there's three things I just want to point out and let you get home and get some rest tonight before you start your work week tomorrow. Um, but he, he begins to praise God, and he's praising Him. First of all, he's praising Him for answered prayer. Answered prayer. Notice verse 4, I sought the Lord, and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. You know, an uh, English publication offered a prize for the best definition of a friend. And among all the thousands of answers they received, uh, some of them were this. One, a friend is one who multiplies your joys and divides your grief. Another one said, a friend is one who understands our silence. 
But here's the definition that won the prize. A friend. One that comes in when the whole world has gone out. One that comes in when the whole world has gone out. Someone else said, well, a friend, a real friend is when you made a fool of yourself, but he doesn't think you've done a permanent job. <laughs> and I think that's pretty good. I hope you have a friend like that. A friend will help you out of difficult situations. A friend on whom you can always depend. A friend who, who will believe in you and be there for you no matter what happens to you. And by the way, if you know Jesus Christ, you have such a friend. There's not a friend like Him. And I sought the Lord, and He heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. Now the Lord is not just a faithful friend. He is a faithful friend, but He's much more than a faithful friend. And here... He's saying, what, when I have fears, when I have, feel like all the world's walked out on me, what I do is I pray to God. I, I, it's amazing sometimes as Christians how we, we minimize prayer. But James talked about tonight in the prayer that went in uh, to, to the fair and prayer that went in to the flyers that went out. But, but listen, don't minimize prayer. Say, is there anything I can do for you? Well, I guess you can pray. You guess we can pray. You know, we have like, wow, well, yeah, you can't do anything else, just pray. No, no, prayer ought to be at the top of the list. Prayer, the, the, the most important thing we can do is to pray. And you can think of, listen, can you think of some situations where you sought the Lord and He heard you and delivered you, where He answered your prayers? You know, it was uh, September 11th, 2002. Everybody, most everybody knows September 11, 2001. This was September 11, 2002. And that's a day we'll always remember. I was down in Alabama uh, with a church member at that time uh, from South Carolina. We were, took an older gentleman who had, was, had been in the church in South Carolina and came up to visit, and uh, we had to take him back home. And so we were in the church van and took that gentleman back home, and my wife was teaching school at the time in South Carolina, and <clears throat> they came to her classroom and uh, got her out of the classroom and said, you need to go to the hospital, and they named the hospital and said, your, uh, your son has been in a car accident. And her thoughts immediately went to Nathan. He had just got his license. I thought, well, that, that sounds about right. And, uh, but it wasn't Nathan who was in the accident. It was Andy. And... Um, Andy had just gotten his kidney transplant in November of 2001, and uh, it's just the following September, and he was, uh, uh, he was working at a, rec a records, medical records place, if I remember right, and um, he, had, he had gone over to the little gas station there to get chocolate milk and donuts, train up a child in the way they should go, amen, <laughs> and uh, that is the breakfast of champions, and... Um, and as he, it was a four-lane road with the thing in between, you know, the lane in between for turning, but the curb lane where the, by the gas station, it was all stopped. And so a car gave him enough room so he could pull out, and the guy in the car just waved him out and said, come on. But Andy wasn't going there. He's going across all the way. And so as he pulled out, he was looking the other direction about the traffic coming this way. What he didn't know was somebody had pulled out of the curb lane in a truck and was gunning it right down the left, the second lane there. And he never saw him. I mean, he, he, he didn't see, he saw Andy, maybe he didn't, but Andy never saw that guy coming. He was looking the other way and the guy hit him right in his driver's door. And uh, so my, my wife called me and we're in Alabama. We're like seven hours away yet. And uh, I think we made it in five. But um, we, um, because they said you gotta come it's serious, and there's blood coming out of his nose and his ears. And that's usually not a real good sign. Yeah. And we remember coming back all the way on that trip and had my Bible with me, and another man was driving and, and praying and just asking God that he'd see fit to spare his life and that he would, he would hear our prayer. Amen. Or the little church we were pastoring at the time, they were all, they were all at the hospital, every one of them. When, when my wife got there, and uh, just, a, just a sweet group of people. It turns out that the blood coming out of his ear was the glass from the window flew into his ear, and it cut his ear, 
But he had some serious injuries, but nothing life-threatening. The amazing thing was he went into the, the emergency room there, and the emergency room doctor that saw him, his, his child was in my wife's class. And she knew he was a transplant. He knew that Andy was a transplant victim. And, or victim. Yeah, a transplant. At a transplant, and so don't give them the dyes and stuff that they might use to run tests for any injuries and such. And boy, that, that sure was lucky. Huh? Yeah. No, that's God, see. That's, that's, the, that's the power of prayer. And so the, and then, of course, we went, I remember going back over to the, the place where they had his car and looking at that car all mangled up, and you couldn't believe that anybody survived. But I did look in and find the donuts and the chocolate milk on the floor, and <laughs> they were still good. No, I'm kidding. They didn't. Try to... <laughs> yeah. Oh, not really. But I did think about it. Brother Jarvis says, I pondered this. I thought about the mission trip that we had out at BPS when we took the bus from Milford. And uh, it, it <clears throat> had overheating problems. And uh, I, I can't remember how far away we were when finally you guys had to send buses out to get us. It was about 100 miles. And uh, they had to send. It's funny. We've got this. I don't know what year the Milford bus was. Probably it, it, a lot newer than theirs. Theirs were from the 60s. They run in, didn't it, 1965 or so Greyhound buses is what BPS uses. And they had to send them out to rescue us that probably had a, what, an 80 or 90, you know, uh, 1980, 1990 bus. But anyway, they got us and took us back. And then they, I think you drove the bus in at night, I think, when it cooled off. I think they were able to drive it because the, the heat wasn't so bad. And um, found out the radiators are gone, the two of them. And uh, at first, I think they couldn't even find them. It was really hard to find them. They finally found a place that said they would ship them to us. And they, uh, they were all excited when they, I think one of them, when did one of them come in? Like Wednesday or something? Do you remember that? And uh, we're all excited. Well, good, Wednesday, you know, we're leaving Friday. Brother d Rap, so I have time to get them on. And get it was Thursday. Oh, Thursday, okay. And, and then we found out that only one of them came. The other one got shipped to the wrong place. Where did it get shipped to? New Orleans. Not exactly around the corner. And, you know, Brother Jarvis come out, and he would always be so good, you know. Well, I got some good news and, <laughs> and uh, some not so good news. But, you know, it, it was exciting because he says, you know, what he always talks about is we all like to hear the stories of how, God moved and, and, you know, people believed God and had faith in God and, boy, God came through and did a miraculous thing. But the problem is somebody's got to live those. That Somebody's got to be the ones that go through that, you know what I mean? And uh, this time we had that opportunity to see that happen. And, uh, the, and God just did a miraculous thing. When did that other one come in? Yeah. We did. We left late Friday night. I remember that because I remember the bus pulling in just before church on Sunday. Wasn't it, Brother Bob? Yeah. Right before church on Sunday. And everybody, everybody, everybody got in. Just amazing what the Lord did. And, and not only provided the, the, the payment for it, we still were lacking some money to pay for everybody for the missions trip. And we got in and had testimonies that night. And there was somebody in church that night that wrote out a check and paid for the rest of the missions trip. And God took care of that as well. Uh, he's exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. Just amazing. The answers to prayer. If ye then be an evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give good things to them that ask Him? If you know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Heavenly Father give good gifts unto them that ask Him? You have not because you ask not. Some of you right now are, are, are facing it. You're getting up against a missions trip and you're not sure how, you're gonna, how it's going to happen or what's going to take place. Hey, you don't fret about it. You don't worry about it. You don't act in fear about it. You pray about it. 
You give it to God and you move in faith, believing that God will take care of you. Amen, Pastor. Good preaching. If I have to preach and amen both, we'll be here a long time. So. Somebody wants to go home, huh? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. I think if there's, if there's one area that most of us would admit that when we get to heaven, we'll probably hang our heads in shame. It'll be our, our prayer time with God. That we wish we would have spent more time in prayer with God. And, and, and more fervency in our prayers. And I believe God desires to hear us when we pray. And He wants to deliver us. He wants to do good things for us. I, I have children, I have grandchildren. I, I want to do good things for them. That's, that's in my heart. Sometimes I'm limited and I can't do what I'd really like to do. But God doesn't have that problem. But He wants us to ask. He wants us to ask. So I, I praise Him for answered prayer. And I praise Him secondly. Notice, if you will, verse number 6. Deliverance from trouble. This is a great verse. This poor man cried. That's, that's prayer. And the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Some of his troubles? Most his troubles? No, all of his troubles. Hey, that means even some troubles that were just because of his own stupidity. I know that wouldn't apply to most people here. But you ever get in trouble just because you did something not so bright? You know what? God doesn't say, hey, too bad. You, 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 made, you, you messed up there. You figure that out. God doesn't do that. He said, he can cry to me and he'll deliver me out of all of my troubles. That's a great promise. Deliverance from troubles. Everybody experiences troubles in life. You know why? Because we live in a sinful world and we live in a fallen world. There's sin and evil of all kinds. A.W. Tozer said this. He said, the fall of man has created a perpetual crisis. It will last until sin has been put down and Christ reigns. Until that time, the earth remains a disaster area and its inhabitants live in a state of extraordinary emergency. And that's true. What kind of troubles do you experience in life? Have you ever got turned down from a job and you just knew that was the one you should have and it was going to be great? Did you ever get fired from a job? Ever lose a good friend? Anybody ever loan you money and never pay it back? Hmm? Did you ever have an accident that put you in the hospital? Did you ever experience a health problem that never seemed to go away? Do you have any family or children that have caused you trouble? Ever have trouble with finances? Everybody could sit and we could all make a list of troubles that we've experienced in life. Like the 73-year-old woman that was fined for driving south on the northbound road. She told the police officer, I thought something was wrong. The traffic seemed to be all going the wrong way. Sometimes you feel that way in life. You feel like the traffic's going the wrong way or I'm going the wrong way in a one-way street. It just seems like everything is coming at you at once. What did Jesus say? Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I'm meek and lowly of heart, and you'll find rest unto your souls. The teacher read that verse or class, and my yoke is easy. She asked the little children, she said, can you tell me, anybody tell me what a yoke is? And a little boy raised his hand and said, yeah, a yoke is what you put around the neck of animals. And the teacher said, that's good, but what is the yoke God puts on us? And a little girl raised her hand and she said, well, that's when God puts his arms around our neck. That's when God puts his arms around our neck. You know, that's what God does. He puts his arms around us to comfort us and to help us and to encourage us. And sometimes that's all you need. Sometimes that's all you need. I can't tell you how many times I've had couples in counseling and they, 
they have issues sometimes where the wife gets a little upset about something or she's just having a hard time and, and she tends to just kind of tear into the husband and I, I tell the husband, here's what you do. When that happens, as hard as it is, you walk right up to her and you put your arms around her and you hug her just as tight as you can and tell her that you love her. And you know what's amazing? They'll come back and say, wow, that works. That works. Now, it's not always easy to do. But you know, that's, that's what they're looking for. You know, sometimes when you, you just get a little out of sorts, would you just realize God's putting his arms around your neck and he's hugging you to himself and he's telling you that he loves you and that everything's going to be all right. He's putting his arms around us. Praise him for deliverance from troubles. He's there to help us. He's there to take care of us. 1 Peter 5. Hold your finger there in 34. We're going to come back to that. Look at 1 Peter 5. Can you turn over there quickly? 1 Peter chapter 5. This is so good, you've got to see it. 1 Peter 5. Notice verse 5. Likewise, ye younger... Submit yourselves unto the elder. Yea, all of you be subject one to another and be clothed with humility. That's what you did so well yesterday. For God resisteth the proud and giveth grace to the humble. Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. Casting all your care upon Him. Why? For He careth for you. He cares for you. Isn't that, isn't that, you know, we, sometimes we just read that so much it doesn't mean anything to us anymore. But he cares about me. And he cares about you. you know, it's, it's, it's one thing to see the 1,800 people. It's another thing to look one person in the eye and say, I, I care about you. Don't just, don't just think that God's just seeing all these people. No, God's looking you eyeball to eyeball and saying, I care about you. He's an individual God, and he cares about each one of us. Praise the Lord. I praise the Lord for answered prayer, praising the Lord for deliverance from troubles. And number three, praise the Lord for the abundant goodness of God. The abundant goodness of God. Look back in Psalm 34 and look at verse number seven. These are great verses. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Isn't, aren't you glad you got the angel of the Lord that camps round about you? But wait, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger, but they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. That, that want is the same as the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I'm not going to be wanting, I'm not going to be lacking anything. And those that seek the Lord will not lack any good thing. The Lord is good, and He does good things. <laughs> get that from Brother Jarvis. But you get it from the Bible. I got news. He didn't originate that phrase. God is the one who did that. Amen? He's passing it on to us. And God says, I'll do good things for you. Every good and every perfect gift cometh from Above, it comes down from above, from the Father of lights, with whom is no variable, it's neither shadow of turning. God's a good God. I love the story about the elderly lady who was well known for her faith and boldness and talking about it, and she would often be on her front porch and be heard shouting praise to the Lord. But next door neighbor was an atheist and wasn't real happy about her openly praising God all the time. And he would always yell back sometimes at her, there ain't no God, there ain't no Lord. He didn't have good English either. Hard times set in on the elderly lady and she was praying to God for some help and she on her front porch and she was saying, Lord, I need you to provide some food for me. And God, I'm going to praise you already for what you're going to do. Lord, I'm going to praise you for the groceries you're going to send to me. I'm asking for your help. Next morning, the lady went out on her porch and there was a large bag of groceries on her porch. And she started shouting, Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! I got the groceries! And about that time she heard a voice from the bushes. 
And it was that atheist. And he jumped out and he said, that wasn't God at all. That was me who put those groceries there. And the lady said, well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He said, now what are you praising the Lord for? He said, God sent me groceries and had the devil pay for them. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Psalm 31, 19. Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. What good things has God blessed you with? Psalm 103 is a, a great psalm. And it's all about praising the Lord and blessing the Lord. David said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits. Here they are. Who forgives all thine iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies. Who satisfieth thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. And, and, and he goes on and on all through the chapter, just, just praising God for His goodness. When's the last time you ever just got a, a card out from your pocket and said, let me just list the things I ought to praise God for. And then just buy yourself somewhere. Just start praising God for His goodness to you. That's been good to us. You know, I came and it was October of 2005. I think it might have been August or, or September of that year. I'd gone to, we were in the church up in northeastern Ohio and I went to the pastor and I said, I believe I'm uh, Lord to have me pastor a church. He said, I think you're right. And we started praying about where the Lord would have us go, and I was looking at some places, and meanwhile, Pastor Rock, who is the pastor here, had decided it was time for him to move on to other things, and was going to uh, resign, and hadn't even told the church yet that he was going to resign. But he called a friend of his, uh, an evangelist at Anchor Baptist Church up in Massillon, Ohio, named Terry Wyrick, and he called him, he was good friends, and he told him he was going to be resigning. Well, Terry Wyrick just happened to know a retired minister who was in the church we were in, in North Canton, <clears throat> told him about this church. And, and that retired minister came to me and had Pastor Joe Rock and the church phone number on a piece of paper. And he said, uh, call this man. And uh, he's going to resign his church. And uh, you ought to talk to him and see if maybe that you'd be a right fit for that church and uh, gave him a call. We were right in the middle of a missions conference, and I <clears throat> couldn't come the first Sunday, but I was going to schedule to come October 16, 2005. And came down and uh, preached that first Sunday there and, and here, Sunday morning, Sunday night. <clears throat> and there was a, a young man then, well, he's still young, uh, Bob Reed came in. Bob came in not knowing that we were here, he came in, coming back to Columbus, am I right, moving back to Columbus, and he came expecting to see Pastor Rock. And instead, we were here candidating. Uh, the church, and, and that time we would preach, and then they would, I guess, meet and talk about it. You know, we, they'd send us over to Fellowship Hall, and we'd go to Fellowship Hall, my wife and I, and Bob left because he wasn't a member here, and uh, so we just got to know Bob. And uh, did that on the 16th, did it on the 23rd, did it again on the 30th. On the 30th, that night, the church voted that they would have us come be the pastor. Now, we didn't, we, we, we believe that's what God wanted. We didn't know at the time that God had Bob Reed come at the same time that we were here and that we would get to know him and that he would be the future, really, he's the right hand man to the pastor, song leader, get it, get it done, fellow, here at the church, and now we've worked together for, well, exception for a little time when you had him in El Paso, uh, for what, nine months or so, maybe a year, uh, he's been here the whole time we've been here, and uh, this, listen, he, don't, <laughs> don't, don't, don't give the credit to the pastor, the guy who really makes it go is Bob Reed, I, I'm serious about that. Okay, I, you know what, you know, that's there, such a blessing to have somebody who, who has the, who, who knows the heart of the pastor and what the pastor wants. And, and it's such a, you know, music is such an area that the devil gets into a church with. 
And it's such a blessing to have somebody who, who, who I'd never, I never, I never have a concern about the music at Bible Baptist Church. Yeah. And that's because of Bob Reed. And he, he'll, uh, he does, he leads the songs the way I want them to be led. If I want something faster, he does it faster. If I want it slower, he does it slower. He does it any way the pastor wants it to be done. Just, uh, just an amazing, I thank God, and I mean this really, I praise God that he gave us a Bob Reed, that he gave me a Bob Reed. And uh, I get some ideas about country fairs, but hey, he, he organizes it all and makes it happen. Uh, he, can, he can put it together. And uh, what a, all that, you say, you know what, God knew. You know why? God does good things. God does good things. I'm not sure we realized 10 years ago that we'd be sitting here talking about 1,800 people showing up at a country fair. I don't think any of us saw that coming. But, but God's a good God. He does good things. Miss Taylor gave me the thing, or missionaries, and I think we're, I don't remember the exact total for two months, but I think it's somewhere around $3,200 per month that goes out for our missionaries now, 71 missionaries, I think, that we support now. What good things has God blessed you with? What good things have you been maybe overlooking because you've been focusing on the, the wrong things? Is it time to stop and consider what good things the Lord's done for you? Is it time to just stop and praise His name? I read this week that Charles Wesley wrote his first hymn just three days after he was converted to Christ. You know what he wrote? The, the hymn he wrote was, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing my great Redeemer's praise. That's only three days after being saved that he wrote that song. He was full of praise for everything that God had done for him, even though he was a baby Christian. What about us? When's the last time you just praised God for answers to prayer? When's the last time you just praised God for the good things he's done for you? What about, what about the troubles he's delivered you out of? What about just the good things he's done for you? You know, there's a, there's a girl in Texas tonight that doesn't have a daddy or three brothers. You still got your daddy and you still got your brothers and sisters you still got your children you ought to thank God for that don't, don't take that for granted by the way good report I just saw this afternoon from Pastor Fugit that looks as if her mother and her other sister and grandma are all going to make it they pray for them though they, obviously they do not know what happened to the, the father or the brothers yet his sons her brothers so pray for the family there but uh I will bless the Lord at all times. I think that's pretty good practice. I think that's something that we ought to cultivate in our life. Amen? And by the time you get to looking at all the bad things or you're looking at the, the negative things, you ought to stop and count your blessings and, and give God the praise that he deserves. Recognize the good things in our lives and praise him. And you know, God inhabits the praises of his people. And when we begin to praise God, you'll be amazed what it'll do in your life and what it'll do in your heart. It'll change you. And you'll enjoy what God's done for you. And I just think as a church, we ought to make sure we take time to praise God for what he has done and for what he's doing at Bible Baptist Church. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, thank you for this evening. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity and the privilege it's ours to praise you. Thank you, Lord, for being a good God who does good things. Thank you for answered prayer. Thank you for delivering us from our troubles. Thank, for, thank you, Lord, for just the abundance of good things that we enjoy. Brother Moreland will head over to Armenia, and God, I know that they don't have near the things we have here in America. But there's people there who have a great love for Jesus Christ and a great love for God. Lord, help us to be thankful for what you've given to us here. You have, we have an abundance of so many things. Please help us to see it. Help us to praise you for the prayers answered, for the troubles we're delivered from, for the good things that you do for us. 
We praise you for yesterday and praise you for what you've done and praise you for what you're going to do in the hearts and lives of people who you sent our way. Father, I pray you'd keep us yielded to you and allow us to continue to be a people that you can use. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. I'm going to finish the prayer in just a moment. We'll stand to our feet. The pianist will play, but the Bob will sing. I just want us to take time tonight to praise the Lord. Let's praise Him for the big day, but let's praise Him for our church. Let's praise Him for His provision. Praise Him for your family. Praise Him for the good things He's done in your life. And you can come and kneel at the altar if you're able to do that. If you're not able to do that, why don't you just sit in your chair. But let's just spend some time to praise God and thank Him for His goodness to us. Father, bless this invitation. I pray, God, that you'll hear our prayer tonight and you'll hear our praise that it'll come up to you. And, Lord, it'll be a sweet, sweet savor in your nostrils tonight as we send praise to you for your goodness to us. We love you. May your praise not just be tonight, but may it continually be in our mouth. And may we make our boast in thee, Lord. So have your way in each and every heart and hear our prayer tonight and I'll thank you for it. With your heads bowed, stand to your feet. As you stand to your feet, the pianist will play. She plays, Bob will sing. God has spoken to your heart. You respond to him tonight. Let's praise him, all right? And I saw the cleansing fountain open wide for all my sin. I obeyed the Spirit's will. When he said, Wilt thou be clean? I will praise him, I will praise him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people, for his blood can wash away each stain. Though the way seems straight and narrow, all I claimed was swept away. My ambitions, plans, and wishes at my feet in ashes lay. I will praise him, I will praise him, Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each stain. Blessed be the name of Jesus. I'm so glad He took me in. He's forgiven my transgressions. He has cleansed my heart from sin. I will praise him. I will praise him. Praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give him glory, all ye people. For his blood can wash away each stain. Glory, glory to the Father. Glory, glory to the Son. Glory, glory to the Spirit. Glory to the three in one. Sing it. I will praise Him, I will praise Him, praise the Lamb for sinners slain. Give Him glory, all ye people, for His blood can wash away each sin. Look this way for just a minute. I just want to do one more thing before we go home. Uh, I just want to have prayer for Brother Moreland as he goes. Let's put this chair down here, Brother Bob, if you would. Brother Ron, I want you to come and just sit in the chair. And if many men as would like to or want to, if you want to come up and just put your hand on Brother Ron. And we're just going to pray for God to bless and prosper him. 
as he heads over for these three months, he'll be working with different nationals and uh, speaking to them and getting them things set up for his ministry and for his family to go back next spring. And uh, we just, just get as close as you can round about, get an arm on somebody who's got an arm on Ron, and we'll ask God's blessing. Him to bless him. Anybody, anybody you'd like to. Okay. Let's pray. Father, we bow before you in prayer, and we're praying for Brother Moreland tonight. God, thank you for Ron and for your, your, your hand upon his life and how you've guided and you've directed and you've led in these several years that you brought him to our church. And now, Father, as he heads over, uh, leaves on Tuesday. God, first we pray for safety and flight. You'll get him safely to Armenia, and then, God, may your hand rest upon him there and the believers that will greet him there. Lord, I pray you'll open the doors for him to get everything set up that he needs to get set up, the permits that need to get done, and, Lord, the training of the pastors and the encouragement of the believers there. Uh, Lord, use him in a mighty way. May, Lord, we, we would like some things to happen that only you could do. It would be impossible for man to do. It has to be God. And so open those doors for him, Lord, and do show yourself strong on his behalf and do what only you can do. We love you. I pray you'll take care of the family and help us as a church to watch over Ann and the children while Ron's away from them. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us to be a blessing and encouragement to them while they're separated from their husband and their dad. Lord, we love you. Thank you for allowing us to have a part in what you're going to do through Brother Moreland, Brother Yoder, and the 1040 International. Lord, use him in a great way, and we'll give you the praise and all the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, it's been quite a couple days, hasn't it? And uh, praise the Lord. Just a wonderful church. Wonderful church. Sure love you and thank God for you. And uh, now... Let's go get these folks that God sent our way, okay? Let's think about all those people that were here that put their name and address and phone number on a card, and we want to go thank them for coming and have an opportunity to give the gospel to them personally, all right? And uh, let's, let's go get them. Come on out on Saturday and help us. If you want to make calls some other time, just see me, and I'll give you some cards, and you can go out. And If another time fits into your schedule, uh, we're glad to have you go another time. Just let me know, and uh, we'll, we'll get the job done. Amen? And uh, that's great. Let's sing It's a Grand Thing to Be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. Got it? Here we go. Hey, it's a grand thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. It's a grand thing to follow Jesus anywhere and everywhere I go. For it's a grand thing to be a soldier in his army here below. It's the grandest thing to be a Christian. It's the best thing I know. God bless you. You are dismissed.